Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back in with another video and this is going to be another episode of the LEGO Star Wars Mock Showcase. This is a series I've created to highlight some of the best mocks I've come across on the internet. If you find any of the mocks in this video impressive, all I ask is that you go to the link in the description and support the builders by giving them a like, comment, or even a follow. The first mock we're going to take a look at is titled Battle of Endor and it was created by a builder by the name of Rui Miguel Anacleto and I feel like this is such a clever idea for a mock. It's just a small Death Star build or a smaller Death Star build all things considered I don't really think that's a tiny build but it comes with so many cool additions to it for one I think the Death Star 2 in general just looks really nice like the build is very well done and you can even see a lot of the unfinished sections there's some good use of greebling at the bottom as well as the right side of the build but there's just so much action going on you for one have the Star Destroyer on the left side crashing into the surface of the Death Star which I thought was just such a cool addition it's actually what really drew my attention to this mock initially but you also have the imperial shuttle that luke takes out of the death star 2 you have the millennium falcon that's uh traveling out of the death star with the x-wing over to the right side at the top right side you have a tie fighter following a star destroyer following what i would guess is supposed to be the home one and then um you also have the medical frigate with a y-wing built right next to it um looking at this guy's page it looks like he does a lot of mini builds and like the vehicle in this mock are so cool like x-wing build the um y-wing build the tie fighter builds they all look very solid and um i just like how everything for the most part is in scale with each other at least for the smaller vehicles obviously like with the medical freaking in the home one the, you're, not, you're not really going to be able to get those in scale with the death star and also have those um medium to large size ships as well but this is just a really nice uh, mock it's a nice desk topper i would think like if you were working in an office or something and just wanted something to kind of spice up your desk it would be cool to not only just have the Death Star, but to have the Death Star 2 with all these action sequences kind of built into it. So um, this is just a really creative mock, I feel, and something I would love to have just on my desk or on a shelf because um, just looking at it, there's just so many um, scenes and things that will kind of spark your imagination um, from this one little build. So this is just a really nice build. Great job. I also think the addition of the Death Star 2 plaque at the very bottom is pretty clever. For this next mock, the builder Kofi is taking us back to Jakku with his Imperial Star Destroyer crashed into the sand. I really like this scene in The Force Awakens. I just I just love the idea of this just wasteland of old Imperial ships kind of crashed in the surface of a planet. And um, I really like this mock in particular uh, for a few things. I think one, just the sand detail looks incredible. I love how dynamic it looks. Like I've seen this mock attempted many times, but this is one of the ones I feel like he just really nailed the attention to detail when it comes to the sand. Like, it just looks so dynamic. Um, I like the use of those curved slopes. Also love it when a builder tries to do basically a, a studless technique for sand, especially at this kind of scale. I mean, I feel like when you have a pulled back view and you're looking at sand, it does look very smooth. So I think that the uh, studless surface is actually very appropriate here. You also notice that there's a lot of like um, little bits of pieces kind of spread around to represent either like other crash ships. So there's like the black hands kind of sticking out of the ground, which is kind of funny. It gives me I guess <laughs> feelings of like I don't know, someone that was buried alive and is now trying to make their way out um what it's probably more realistically supposed to represent is like some sort of ship or just like you know pieces of a ship that crashed there maybe even um the tie fighter that we see crashed in the uh in the, in the ground there and then there's also just other various pieces of greebling spread throughout it but um going on to the star destroyer build i think that actually looks really nice as well i like the use of the, the dark red to kind of represent some of the resting on it and if you look at the like cutout picture on the top left there's some pretty cool looking engine builds like I love how I mean for one they look very round but um, they're all kind of askew and, and kind of messed up it really does give the feeling of like this thing really did damage itself when it crashed onto the surface of Jakku. So um, I appreciate that quite a bit. One of the other things I really like about this mock is on that, on that photo to the top left, there's like a flex tubing kind of hanging out of the Star Destroyer, which I, I don't know, just looks really nice. It makes it look even more damaged. Of course, I couldn't talk about this mock without mentioning the black border that goes around it. Like I said, man, it's just something about those black borders. It makes these mocks look so sweet. One of the things I'm kind of conflicted about is the sand pouring over the black border. Like I totally understand what he was going there but i feel like if you're gonna have the black border it should be the border right like that that's kind of the point there and i mean you could i guess 
make a further artistic point about um, just kind of the nature of the environment that you're trying to project here with kind of the sand overflowing and it kind of gives an idea of like the sand is, is, is kind of endless like the border is there but um Jakku is a very desolate place and the sand just goes on forever so I mean th there are definitely um, points to be made with the sand kind of going over it but I don't know I, I ultimately feel like if you have the black border the mock should stop there I don't know how do you guys feel about mocks that have like a very defined border but then the mock still kind of pours over it in some circumstances are you guys a fan of that let me know in the comment section all right this next mock is going to shock a lot of you Never before in the series have I been so conflicted as to whether or not I want to incorporate a specific mock into the series, but today is the day that I'm caving. Today is the day you'll see something that I never thought I would do, and I certainly never thought I would do in public. And I'm actually gonna give some praise to a Twilight. This is a Twilight mock by um, Simon Wilde. Um, if you're not really aware of why I'm so conflicted with this mock, Quite simply put, I think the Twilight is the ugliest ship in the Star Wars universe. I think the Lego set that they made of it is an abomination. And ultimately, I would just like to forget the ship existed in its entirety. But I think Simon did a really good job on this mock, so that's why I want to talk about it today. I really like the usage of the sand blue uh, incorporated into this. It's just not something you see typically, especially on Star Wars builds. Um, this looks like a render, so I'm going to assume that probably most of those sand blue parts don't actually exist. Um, but I'm sure if you wanted to build it in real pieces you could find some substitutes to get it mostly looking like the way it looks like now um but yeah that, that sand blue is probably what really made me want to incorporate this i think that there's just a good usage of colors on this mock even on the bottom wing he uses it looks like some dark orange parts um i just like that i like when you can get a little colorful with star wars mock considering uh, most of them end up being like white gray or black I really like the way he's constructed the window, like, um, on the actual Twilight, the window is kind of a weird shape, like, it's not something that translates obviously to Lego, but I think he just does a solid job here using those wedge plates and then, um, just the standard 2x4 tiles to create the shape of the window, and it looks really good. Uh, one of the things about this mock in general, I feel, is the shapes just all come together really well, like, there aren't any just giant, absurd gaps, like, everything, uh, flows very well, which is always nice for a mock like this. If we turn around to the back side of the mock, we get a better look at the engines. I think that um, engine design on the left side looks really nice. I like the usage of those um, one by two curved slopes, but like with the, the like cut in them, there's like a 45 degree angle at the tip of it. Um, that just looks really nice to me, I think. Um, and then on the back, you can also get a better look at the garage in this mock. And um, the builder actually made it a point to say he wanted to keep it as compact as possible, but still maintaining the ability to put, um, I guess, a Delta 7A in the back of it. It's hard for me to tell whether or not that Delta 7 is anywhere close to minifig scale. I want to assume it's not, even though you can kind of see R2's head poking out. But um, it's a cool concept. Like, I've never seen someone build a Twilight where you could fit a Delta 7B in the back of it. So I think that's actually pretty freaking cool. I think before I do more irreparable damage to my reputation, I'll go ahead and stop talking about this mock. Like I said, I hate the Twilight. The Twilight looks like a shoebox with a garage and a wing sticking out on the side of it. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to let that deter me from giving builders credit where credit is due because I actually do think this is a really nice mock. Maybe if LEGO did something kind of not hideous and more close to this, I wouldn't have such strong feelings about the Twilight. But until then, but until then I'll be a Twilight hater for life. The next mock we're going to take a look at is a trash compactor scene from A New Hope, and it is by a builder by the name of Marcus on Flickr, and oh my god, this thing looks incredible. Um, for one, I think just the amount of detail just in this very confined space alone looks really good. And I think we'll start with the walls because the walls were really the first thing I noticed. I love that it's built snot, especially vertically because you can get a lot of just like the discoloration in the walls. I even see a usage of some of the old gray in there, which makes a ton of sense for a location like this. Like ultimately, um, I try to stay away from old gray, but um, when it's used deliberately and when it's used um, in, in organized fashion, um, I think it can actually go a long way. So using a little bit of it as like spots in the wall, I think it's really nice here. And um, it's like for such a for such a like a dirty location, this is really a clean, pristine looking mock, which um, I don't know. I, I think that says just a lot about how good the builder is. I think the door technique actually looks really nice as well. Like those um, wedge tiles that he's using, I think look really nice there. And um, I don't know, it's just a really nice looking door. And if you want it to 
build not just this, but you were just building something Star Wars related and you kind of wanted a, a unique looking door, like this is definitely a technique that you could use to achieve that. I also give him a lot of credit for using the most updated versions of all of these figures. You can see Han sporting his new hair. Um, they're sporting these utility belts on the um, Stormtrooper uniforms. We got the newest Leia, well, I guess some kind of the newest Leia. Um, and then the official newest one would have the dress piece, but I'm willing to not really harp on that. Um, I just like the fact that the figure like detail is kind of on par with the mock detail. It always does kind of take away from a mock when you have this just like beautiful location, but the mini figures in it are like yellow or like Clone Wars figures or like just like figures from, you know, like eight to 10 years ago. Um, so it's nice when the mock detail is matching the figure detail as well. And I think the biggest draw to this mock has to just be the multitude of pieces spread around to represent a lot of the trash and the debris hanging around in the trash compactor. Like there's just such a variety of pieces in there. And um, it looks, I mean, it looks like while it's kind of supposed to be random and supposed to be um, like trash, right? Like like nothing, no, in no particular order. It, it still looks organized and it's almost like controlled chaos, right? Um, I don't know really how to explain it other than that. He just did a good job at organizing the debris to just make it really look accurate and really look nice. And of course, there's such a, just a wide array of pieces um, spread around in there. And just this picture alone just really takes you right back to that scene in the trash compactor. So all in all, this is such a beautiful mock. Um, another one that I would love to have on a shelf uh, this is really one of the most iconic scenes in all of Star Wars, which is kind of funny to think about. It's in a trash compactor. But this dude, Marcus, just did this uh, location such justice with this mock, and I give him a lot of credit for it. Now, the final mock we're going to take a look at today is unfortunately a render, but I think when I show you guys the photos of this and we get more deeply into it, you'll totally understand why it's a render and you're really not going to hold it against me for including it in this video. But um, it was built by Builder Dine Foxhound and it is basically a 71,000 piece, 13 foot long Superstar Destroyer. Oh my God. So I first came across this mock many years ago on... Um, Euro bricks and it was just one of those titles, right? Cause it's like 71,000 piece, 13 foot superstar destroyer. It's one of those titles you, you can't help but to click on and look at cause this thing is just totally ridiculous. And um, he built it, he built it in LDD. Apparently he could only, um, it had to be fit in, in two LDD files, which is kind of ridiculous to think about in itself. Like I could fit my uh, ATM six, which was 16,000 pieces in an LDD file. But on my computer, that was like really pushing the limits of LDD. Like it was, a very slow program at that point. So for him to foot basically, you know, two uh, 35,000 piece builds in LDD, that is insane. But um, he spent a lot of time on this. When I read up on the details, apparently he spent like over 300 hours on this mock, which for a vehicle mock just blows me away. Like I can't even imagine spending that much time on something like this. But um, the, the results definitely show that it was worth it for him. Uh, if we go to the next photo, I, I think it just gives you a really good look at the scale. And I find it kind of funny that he threw this picture together. Um, this is his <laughs> Superstar Destroyer next to a Lamborghini. And um, I find this hilarious. Like, imagine you're watching a YouTube video and you get uh, caught by an ad of some dude in his garage with a Lamborghini behind him, and he is also standing next to a superstar destroyer in Lego. Now, that would give you some knowledge. If you look at the next photo, um, I think this is a really nice photo because it just gives you a look at just, just how much detail is in this mock. Like, it really just is insane. Um, you, no matter how many mocks you build in your life, you'll probably never do as much griebling in, you know, over the course of your mock career as this guy did on this one vehicle. And uh, it definitely goes a long way. So he has some um, mini scale Star Destroyers to go alongside it. That is not like a full to scale Star Destroyer. But um, if you look just like at the bottom near the engines, there are just so many griebling pieces like it just like looking at that makes me anxious thinking about having to place all those gray parts but it looks really good I like the usage of those big light gray tires I'm, I'm gonna assume those probably don't exist in actual Lego but it looks good for what it is and um, it makes a good engine piece and as someone who is not a big fan of the Lego Superstar Destroyer um, I know they could not do anything close to this I would never expect 
anything close to this, but um, it just makes me happy that he spent so much time on the bottom of this vehicle since LEGO couldn't be bothered to spend any time on the bottom of their UCS Superstar Destroyer. One of the points he actually made about this mock is that um, all of the details and like the Griebling and the, the dorsal city area of this mock are actually accurate. Like he looked at the studio model and tried to basically go part for part area for area and make it a replica, which is insane. Um, I'm not gonna do the work and try to look at photos and to confirm whether or not he's right. I will take his word for it, because looking at this, there is a lot of just detail and it looks like just deliberate part usage. Like nothing about this makes me think that it was just random or that he was just trying to throw Griebling in there, um, especially for something at such a large scale. Like it honestly would be easier to have a blueprint than to just try to come up with so many different random patterns for Griebling at the top of a vehicle. And it just looks incredible. Like this is so cool, especially if you zoom in, you're just gonna look at this, the multitude of the, the usage of parts. And um, I guess one of the other points he mentioned is that there's no like specific ground to this area. Like, like these are all structures kind of built up, but in the studio model, like you can't really see the bottom of it. So there's no telling how deep down these um, buildings and structures go into the core of the Superstar Destroyer, which for a Lego build, I mean, you could be building, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of Griebling that no one really is ever gonna see unless they get like a magnifying glass or something. So that is just incredible, the amount of detail and the amount of work that he was willing to put into this build. The next photo is another look just at the side of the vehicle, once again, next to those other Star Destroyers. And um, the renders of this thing look ridiculous. Like there's just so many like tiny parts um, it's just, it's just insane. Like I said, I can't even imagine having to put something like this together. One of the other cool things, if you look like the Griebling that's uh, between the two hull plates, there's actually like some trans dark blue elements in there to represent, um, the, the lights in the, in the Super Star Destroyer. That's probably one of the most defining characteristics of it. The fact that it has those like blue lights poking through it. So it's cool that he, uh, represented that in this mock. And then the final picture, and I think this is probably the most telling of just how accurate this mock is. Um, there's a render of it basically next to the Superstar Destroyer from the film, and they look almost identical. So, like I said, I would take his word that he spent you know, tons of time trying to make this thing as accurate as possible, trying to make this thing um, really just a, a one for one, trying to make this thing as close to the studio model or the movie version that we see as possible. So um, I thought that would be a fun treat for us to look at, especially with the new uh, UCS Star Destroyer coming out next week. I felt why not take a look at um, probably the most ridiculous Lego Star Destroyer you'll ever see in your life. Uh, I guess at some point he wants to build this. He even started selling the instructions to this mock um, to kind of fund him being able to build it. I really don't see anyone buying the instructions of this, this mock to build it. They'd probably just want to see it just for the novelty of having them and just looking at all the details he put into it. But I don't know if there's some rich person out there who wants to build this insane Lego mock. Um, I'd say, please, please do it. I'd love to see it. But that's gonna finish up the discussion on this mod, guys. I really would love to know, what do you think about this thing? Like, are you guys like a fan of mocks like this that are, you know, mostly impossible to build? Like, um, realistically, we'll probably never see this thing in real bricks, but um, do you have still an appreciation for people that do stuff like this? Or do you see it really as a waste of time to design a mock that probably will never actually get built in real bricks? Uh, definitely let me know what you think about it in the comment section. And that's going to finish up today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed looking at these mocks as much as I enjoyed getting to talk about them to you. One thing I ask is that if you like any of the mocks in this video, just make sure you go support the builders. The links are in the description. Show them some love. They certainly deserve it. Also, if you like what I do, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button. Support the channel by smashing that subscribe button. And I'll be back again very soon.